Good morning. We're going to talk about life on Earth again today and pretty ain't it. What we can see here is these are city lights at night taken from a satellite. We also see the curvature of the Earth, which once again proves that the Earth is a sphere. It is not flat. I know you hear that from people, but I'm sorry, they're wrong. Right here, we also see an image that was taken from a satellite, the sun coming up, if you want to put it that way, although we're actually rotating towards it. One of the things we have to remember is we are in a perfect position for life to be sustained here on Earth. Our distance from the sun is very important. We're in what is called the Goldilocks zone. Now, interestingly enough, is that we're about 150 million kilometers in distance from the sun which is equivalent to about 93 million miles. This varies throughout the course of the year because our orbit is what is called elliptical. It is an oval shape, not a perfect circle. So there are times that we are further from the sun than we are at other times of the year. Interestingly enough, North America, where the United States is located, we are actually closer to the sun during our winter. But this is all based on the tilt of the earth and not distance. So bear that in mind. That's an eighth grade teak that you'll be investigating. Uh, obviously in eighth grade next year. Interestingly enough, on this picture, this is an eclipse. So this is the moon actually coming between us and the sun. And that's why it is covering it here. This is a very unique thing. If you ever have an opportunity to observe an eclipse, do it. Another important aspect is our Earth's atmosphere. Notice right here in this picture, we're able to see actually the atmosphere of our planet. This is where the gases are contained. Uh, they believe that they are held in place primarily by gravitational forces. But there's another factor that needs to be taken into consideration that we'll talk about here in a moment. It's very important. Our atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen which is a gas that is considered inert, which means that it doesn't burn, it doesn't react, it just kind of is there. 21% oxygen. This is the important statistic for us. At 23% oxygen, everything would become so flammable that we wouldn't be able to live on Earth. And flammable, I mean, things would burn. It would take a minor spark and things would be in flames. If it were 19% oxygen, you would suffocate. That's not enough oxygen in our atmosphere to support humans. And then the other 1% is a number of other elements, argon, krypton. Yes, there is a such thing as krypton, and it's generally a gas. Uh, carbon dioxide, methane or methane, however you choose to pronounce it. So there are a lot of other gases in our atmosphere that are below the 1% level. Our magnetic field. This is very important. What it does is it creates what you could consider our bubble. Because what our sun does is it gives off a tremendous amount of energy, not only light and heat, but there's a lot of other energy coming from it that is considered the solar wind, W-I-N-D. And what happens is, is our magnetic field, is that it comes out from around our Earth, actually blocks a lot of this. So this illustration is fairly accurate as to what it's doing as far as the solar wind, which you see is bypassing us. If we didn't have a strong magnetic field, the sun's solar wind would literally blow our atmosphere off our planet. They believe that is what has happened to Mars, that Mars once had a better atmosphere but due to some of its loss of its magnetic field due to other conditions, uh, the solar wind actually blew its atmosphere off and weakened it to the point that it won't sustain life as we understand it. One of the most important factors to us is liquid water. And this is just a beautiful scene. Don't you wish you were there right now? Maybe you're sitting out in this little boat watching the sharks go by as you dangle your feet in the water. Well, if there's sharks going by and you're dangling your feet in the water, I can't really help you out. But we do need to remember that on Earth, 
Water exists in all three states. Water vapor, which is the gaseous state in our atmosphere. Liquid water, which you see here. And then we've got ice, which is the solid version. Please remember, as you are doing your STEM scopes today, your assignment, please read carefully, utilize that information to answer the questions. You should be 100% successful. And we will see you tomorrow.